Hello from Pastor Jan. Wish I could be at church with you today, but since we're not, I thought maybe we would just work a little bit together and worship together. You know, worship is all about how we live our lives, and we don't have to be together in the same place physically to be able to worship. So I'm going to invite you to join with me today as we worship. I know it's a new experience for many, many of you, but hopefully you won't find it too hard. As a pastor, I want you to know that you are loved and that you are in my prayers. This isn't a full service as you're used to, but it is a little different because God has a word of hope for you, no matter if you're sitting in the pews or you're sitting in that comfort chair watching this and listening to this. During this time of fear, not only because of coronavirus, but also from the economic setbacks, many of you may be, feel like you're in hiding, like Peter is today. Have heart. Listen to these words from Isaiah 43. Don't fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they won't sweep over you. And when you walk through the fire, you won't be burned. I am the Lord, your God, and you are precious in my eyes. Don't fear, no matter where you are, I am with you. God will make a way. So breathe deeply, relax, and come to God's presence. Let's pray. Lord, when we pass through the waters, I know that there, you are there with us. Lord, when we suffer and feel hopeless, you are there. When we are joyful and celebratory, you are there. Whether we feel triumphant or defeated or alone, you are with us always. Amen. Now take a moment and close your eyes and imagine that you're with Jesus in a beautiful green pasture by sparkling waters and pray this 23rd Psalm with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the darkestness, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies and you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Well, today we're going to continue studying Simon Peter, and we'll see just how he is redeemed by Jesus, just as we can be as well. We're going to turn to two scriptures. If you want to pull out your Bibles and read along, you can. The first is from Luke 22, chapter, verses 54 through 62. Then seizing Jesus, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. And Peter followed at a distance. And when they were there and had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard, he sat down. And the servant girl that was seated there with him said to him, This man was with Jesus. But he denied it. And he said, Woman, I don't know him. He said, A little while later, someone else saw him and said, You are one of them. And he said, man, uh-uh, I don't know him. And then about an hour later, another asserted, certainly this fellow was with him, for he's a Galilean. And Peter replied, man, I don't know what you're talking about. And just then, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. And then Peter remembered the words that the Lord has spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Peter has betrayed Jesus and thought it was over, you know, but he chose a different path than Judas. Listen to John 21, 12 through 17. And Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. But none of the disciples could bring themselves to ask him, well, who are you? And then all of a sudden they knew it was the Lord. And Jesus came and he took the bread and gave it to them. And he did the same with fish. And this was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciple as he was raised from the dead. And when they finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. 
And then Jesus asked a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. And he asked a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was sad that Jesus had to ask him three times, do you love me? He replied, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. I would imagine if I said to you, what was the worst day in your life that you wouldn't have any trouble bringing it to mind? Maybe it was a time when a spouse cheated on you or maybe a day when someone you love passed away. Perhaps it was a day when you were a teenager when you were humiliated in a bunch of people. Whatever it was, my guess is you still remember it in detail and you can still feel the pain. I remember my worst day. I was 14. And I was looking forward to going to what was called girls camp. It was a time that you would learn new leadership skills. For me, it was a week away from my family and having to take care of my six brothers and sisters. So I packed my bag. I was all ready to go. And it happened. My four-year-old four little sister stopped breathing. Now, it wasn't the first time. She had a heart problem since the time she was born. And... I'd resuscitated her many times throughout the years, but this time it was different. She didn't respond as well, and the EMTs took her away in the ambulance with my parents following along in that old station wagon. My mom said she called me and t told me, take care of the kids, don't let them get into trouble, which I did. Hours went by and finally the phone rang and I ran to it because I was sure it was my parents telling me that it was okay but it wasn't. It was the funeral home calling to say, can we go pick up Annette's body? From best day to worst day in a few hours. I think that's how Peter felt today. You know, we all know that story. Jesus had warned him to start praying when he was in the garden because he knew he was going to be tested. And Peter said, no, I think I'll just go ahead and sleep. I'm the rock. You already named me that. I know I'm going to be fine. Famous last words, right? That women of us have said before. And sure enough, Simon denied Jesus three times and then the rooster crows. And Jesus looks at Peter with those mournful eyes, you know, and as if to say, I told you, Peter, you should have prepared. It isn't hard to imagine that Peter started fleeing into the darkness, crying uncontrollably. This had to be the worst night of his life. You know, the rock whom Jesus had declared was going to be the rock that he was going to build his church, hid in guilt and shame. And because he was hiding, Peter wasn't there to hear Jesus' final words of forgiveness from the cross, where he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Peter wasn't there when Jesus was taken down from the cross and buried. Had the crucifixion been the end of Jesus' stories, it probably would have been the end of Peter's story as well. Most likely he would have lived with his guilt and shame for the rest of his life. But we know, don't we, that the cross wasn't the end of Peter's story. He did go on to become the rock that Jesus predicted that he would. But what caused him to go from coward to courageous? We all know it was Jesus. Jesus made that difference to Peter. Over a charcoal fire cooking fish, Jesus asked Peter three times, do you love me? Ask him, Peter, to reaffirm his love in light of the three denials. And Jesus was offering forgiveness, reconciliation, which forced Peter to deal with his denial of Jesus. Jesus is both confronting Peter and reaffirming his call to Simon to lead the church. Peter had to understand that Jesus saying, feed my sheep, was indicating that he was to pastor the flock now a role that Jesus had given to him himself when he said, I am the good shepherd. And I thought, wow, failure has a way of humbling us, doesn't it? But then doesn't failure teach us something as well? I don't know anybody enjoys failing. I surely don't. And I seriously doubt you would have accepted me as your pastor if I boldly said, yes, I'm the biggest failure in the world. And I don't know any of you that have come to me and said, I sure hope I fail today, but failure is a great teacher. 
It takes failure and forgiveness and faith and humility to become the person that God wants us to be. You know, Peter could have just blown off his failure and said, well, at least I was there. The rest of the disciples took off. But he didn't, did he? He accepted what Jesus was teaching him and opened himself up to what might be next. And that's what we have to do, don't we? At times we have to say, yes, I failed you, Lord, or yes, I failed my friends or someone else and say, but I've learned from this. I'm not going to do that again. So we have to stop and think, well, what's all the good news that Peter's story tells us? The first is failures don't define us if we're willing to accept forgiveness and accept that it was our fault that we failed and to move on. We have a choice. We can hide and we can never try whatever it was again, or we can ask God for forgiveness and ask God for help this time. Like Peter, sometimes we don't pray enough and we're not strong enough to face whatever the temptation is that comes to us. You know, failing happens to us all the time. You know, it's part of our human condition. It's part of our experience. We all have it, but we need to learn from it. God just doesn't forget us just because we're failures and we make mistakes. Secondly, Jesus' love for us was demonstrated by his death on the cross. Our love for him is de demonstrated when we humbly accept his help and we love others. This is what John, Jesus was talking about in John 15, 8, when he said, My Father is glorified when you produce fruit. And in this way, prove that you're my disciples. And what is that fruit? Well, we all know what it is. Love one another as I have loved you. He doesn't say love some people. He doesn't say judge some people. He says just love everyone the way I have loved everyone. Wow, that's tough, isn't it? That's real tough work because there's some people we just don't want to love. Some people are, let's face it, just a little bit more difficult, you know, and they could be us, but... We never admit that, of course. But this is really good news for us, you see? Because we don't have to judge anybody, then we can be open to love everybody. We can forgive them for and be compassionate for them, you know? We just have to love. Like Peter, you know we're all gonna fail. But the good news is that our worst day can become our best day. Jesus invites you to swallow that pride and to ask forgiveness for past failures and to just follow him. Shame and guilt will only keep you from moving forward. Jesus is looking at you when he says, do you love me? Do you accept my forgiveness? Do you wanna come into reconciliation? And the answer is yes. And then Jesus says, feed my sheep. Say yes to Jesus. Lose the, all the sorrows and the pains and the grief and the regrets and feed his sheep. Would you pray with me? Covered with shame from his denial, people leapt into the sea, only to be fed and nourished by Jesus. Peter was forgiven. Lord, thank you for your willingness to go to the cross, to save us from our sins, and to provide us eternal life. Let us be willing to love and feed Jesus' sheep in response to his great sacrifice, his love and compassion. Amen. Just remember that in this time of uncertainty and fear, God promises to pass through them with you and me and to strengthen our soul. He invites you to green pastures and calming streams of life. Go into his presence whenever you feel afraid. If you'd like to hear music to go along with this, go to our website and click on the bulletins for this week. And within there, you'll find links to music which can soothe your soul. Now for today, may God keep you safe and free of fear and may your life bless others. And this is Pastor Jan. Have a great day.